Welcome to this GiveWorks video. My name is Jonathan Lehman, and this is the first video in a three-part video series on the power of smart lists. In this first video, I'm going to define a smart list, explaining what it is and what it's not. I'm also going to show you how to create the various types of smart lists that are available in, within GiveWorks. In future videos, I'm going to show you the many areas within GiveWorks that smart lists can be used and how powerful that is, and also some of the advanced features that are available with smart lists. So let's get started. Let's begin by signing into GiveWorks. You'll notice there's a smart list option on the toolbar. You click on that, it brings you to the main landing pair page where much of the functionality that you can do with smart list can be generated. You can create a new smart list, or view smart list, or manage your smart list, or manage your favorite smart list. Uh, but before we get started, we need to really define what is a smart list. Well, smart lists are, are it's a dynamic list of donors, donations, or pledges that that's generated based on a set of rules or definitions or criteria. Click on View All Smart Lists. All GiveWorks databases come with a predefined set of smart lists, such as all donations, which is a list of donations, or all donors, or all pledges. There's also other other uh, lists down there, such as overdue pledges, which is a subset of the pledges based on a set of rules that determines what an overdue pledge is, is what's used to generate that list. So all these are based uh, based on a set of rules. It will generate um, the appropriate list of donors or donations or pledges. Sometimes it's helpful to understand what a smart list, what something is by understanding what it's not also. So let me go to mailings and go to the mailing manage mailing list. I'm going to edit a newsletter mailing list. And those of you, probably many of you might be familiar with mailing lists. Mailing lists are lists where you can add or remove donors from these from these lists and you can use them for um, for reporting and also to generate mailings. But you choose when to add or remove donors. I can click on this and I can remove some donors or I could add an additional donor or donors to this list. It's a list that I define when I add or remove members from it. Whenever I re reference that list, whatever uh, donors that are currently in that, that list or, or, or what it, it's going to return for me. So it's different than smart lists. Smart lists are dynamically generated. In and of themselves, they're, they don't really store anything like a mailing list. Um, they're based on a set of instructions or rules that you define. And they're all that list is automatically generated when you request that that smart list. So an analogy would be: let's say you have a bunch of colored blocks, green, red, and blue. And a mailing list is kind of like a bucket that you would fill with some of the blocks. Maybe all the red ones, or maybe a combination of colors. And blocks can be added or removed as necessary. When someone asks for the mailing list, they are given the bucket of blocks for that mailing list. A smart list is more like an empty bucket that has instructions attached to it. Instructions might be something like get all the red blocks, or get five red blocks and five green blocks. When someone asks for the smart list, the bucket is filled by following the instructions that are attached, and then they are given the bucket of blocks. And then once the smart list is done being used, the blocks are dumped back out. The key difference to understand is that if you change the color of a block, say from red to green, it will never be automatically added or removed from the mailing list bucket unless someone, unless you choose to do that and specifically add that block or remove that block, but it will automatically affect whether it is added to the empty smart list bucket whenever someone requests that smart list. So let's, let's begin by demonstrating this. Let's create a smart list. The first question I get is what would you like to show in this new smart list? I get a choice of donors, donations, or pledges. This is really specifying choosing one of the three types of smart lists that are available within GiftWorks. I want you to think about this question. Is what would you like to see in your result list? Would I like to see a list of donors? Would I like to see a list of donations? Would I just like to see a list of pledges? Um, at this point, we, want, we don't want to be thinking about the criteria or the rules that we're going to use to generate this list. Um, because sometimes that, that confuses if we're uh, because just if I select a donation list, which means I'm going to get a list of donations, it does not preclude me from um, using a donor criteria such as show me all the donations or the donors from the state of Pennsylvania. So I want you to make sure you answer the simple question here that what type of list do I would I like to see? Let's begin by looking at a donor smart list. And I get a choice click click here to select a criteria category. Criteria is another name for a rule or, a, or an instruction. So if I click on that, I get a whole list of categories of potential criteria, uh, such as personal info, such as name, contact info, such as phone, email, and address, and so forth. I have donation history, which is aggregate donation information, or based on uh, individual donation information. I, I have custom field criteria. If I have volunteers and events added, I have that also. Let's begin by selecting cr a criteria of uh, partial zip code. This is a string search, so I have wildcards available, so if I say one asterisk, it's really saying all those zip codes that begin with one. When I do that, it brings me up to the main uh, smart list definition area where I have a show, don't show, and options. Options is a, an advanced feature we'll cover in an additional video. Um, show is basically where all my criteria that would, would determine what is included in my smart list, and I have a working list down here that I can see. 
don't show would be all we're going to review when we're doing a donations part list would be criteria that if it meets that criteria it actually removes it from the list you always have to have at least one show criteria and don't show is optional um, some of the things you can do with the list uh, you can customize the list of columns in this case I'm going to remove um, the address and city state column and the phone and since I'm working with zip code I want to see the zip code I'm going to do that I can actually move these columns and rearrange them if I want to in this case I'll leave them the same I can expand the list of these columns um, so I want to expand this a little bit and actually I can change the sort of it this is a sort of ascending order by displaying them I could change it to descending order uh, so you can see I can customize that list how I want it to look um, and I'm, I can see how it's go going to look if I click add a criteria set and click here to select an additional criteria uh, to select a criteria category and I'm going to go back into zip again uh, partial zip code again I'm, in this case I'm going to put zero asterisk which would be all those that begin with zero when I do this you see I have nine donors now if I click OK I get ten donors because what that's doing is it's it's basically saying if it meets either one of these criteria each of these set is a criteria can meet any one of these so it's any of those that zip code matches uh, begins with one or begins with zero um, um, some of the other criteria types. I just want to show you some of the types of criteria that are available. Um, I showed you the zip code uh, partial. There are criteria out there that have, give you a list that you can check any of the ones in the list, and any ones, any of the ones that it matches, it will be, uh, it will match that criteria. There's also a, a dollar criteria uh, with such for like donation history, for instance. There's like the total donations you need, and you can say it's less than, greater than, or between a dollar amount. Uh, there's also uh, for, uh, for instance, donation history, there's a, a number comparison, so it's less than or greater than or between a number. Uh, there's criteria for for dates, so you could look at your uh, history and you could say um, any donor that was created um, this current week or current fiscal year, or current year, last year, or you could put in custom dates on a certain date, before a date, after a date, between a date. And then also the final type of criteria we have is we also have like true or false yes no criteria um, such as has overdue payments. You select a radio button. Does it have overdue payments or does it not? That's the type of criteria that's available. Once you've say once you uh, defined your smartness, you click next. You can give it a name, um, and you would want to make this name as descriptive as possible so people would understand what they're what. Um, what's going to be included in the smart list. You probably want to give a nice description. You can categorize your smart list to help organize them. You can add a new category if you necessary, if you need to, or you can just, I'm going to, in this case, I'm just going to put it in my uncategorized. You can share this list with other, use, with other users. If you share this list with other users, any other user can run your smart list. You will be the only one in all cases that can edit your smart list, but this would uh, determine whether other people can use your smart list. And this would add this list to your list of favorite if you check that. So I'm going to click save the list. Uh, you'll see that I get my list the way I defined it. If I click the smart list, it's available in my list of smart lists and uncategorized. It's also available in my in my favorites. Let's create a donation smart list. Show you some additional features. You see the criteria is slightly different. Different list of criteria. I have donor, some donor information, a lot of donation information and custom fields. I can say donation amount greater than hundred dollars. Comes up to my definition page. In this case, instead of saying add criteria set, I'm going to refine my criteria and I'm going to append more. And I'm going to click here uh, for criteria category, and I'm going to go to um, donor information. I'm going to select or the household. If this is donor, a donor criteria, and say where the household profile, where the profile is a household profile. By doing that, I'm creating a condition. It's an and condition. Any of those donations where the where the amount is greater than 100, and it's a household profile. So it has to meet both of those criteria. I click done. I'm now down to eight donations. So I, I showed you how you can, um, by appending criteria within the same criteria set, you're creating an and condition. It has to meet both conditions. I, I'm scrolling over here so you can see the actual list of funds. Show would be all those uh, items that you, all the criteria you want it to, to meet to be included in your smart list. If you s click don't show and you select a criteria, it would be a criteria that if it meets it, it would actually remove it from your list. So in this case, I'm going to click, select the, the fund, the building fund, or the fund criteria, and select building fund, and you'll see it will remove, if it meets those, which is two for the building fund, it will actually remove those donations from my list. So now you can see how you can use, the sh again, show is always required, don't show is optional. Again, I'll just do a quick def uh, a name here, household donations. Greater than a hundred dollars. Again, you'd want to give a good description. I'm going to share this. I want to add to my list of favorites. Pledge smart lists are very similar. Um, I will create a smart list, 
can and select pledges. We're not actually going to go through and create one, but you'll see it just has a different set of criteria. But it's very similar where you first select your first show criteria, and then you can go through and you can define it, and uh, and you can save it. Again, you have some donor information for that. Um, so pledge, you would just get a list of pledges in that case. One of the other features available is you can actually create a smart list. You can start with an existing smart list. So I could start with an existing smart list, such as my donor zip one, and I could create it and create a new one based on that, and then I could work for that and make sort of a, um, I could start with that as a starting point and then, and then refine it as I need to. Hopefully this gives you some understanding of what a smart list is and, and how you would uh, define, uh, create a smart list and how you know what type of smart list you want to request and define. And uh, future videos will go over the many areas that SmartList can be used and how powerful it is and also some of the advanced features that are available um, within SmartList. So we hope you enjoyed this video and we encourage you to watch the other videos as part of this video series.